Hello everyone, this is Dro and welcome back to the Redstone Tutorial series episode number 10. And today we're going to talk about comparators. So as I told you in the first episode, which has been quite a while back, you can actually generate redstone signals out of how many items are in, in, in a block with an inventory, such as chests, or furnaces, or droppers, dispensers, hoppers, jukeboxes as well. This works a bit differently um, than also minecarts with chests and hoppers, provided they are on top of a detector rail. Uh, cauldrons, those also work a bit differently. End portal frames, brewing stands, and starting in 1.8 also the rotation of items in item frames. As you see it starts with 1 and goes up to 8 and then drops down again. So how do we know which signal strength will be outputted? Well, what it does is it just basically takes all uh, the number of all of these, uh, the slots, 5 in this case, it could also be 27, 3, 9 and so on and so forth, 4 for the brewing stand, and calculates the average of uh, the amount of items that is in there. So for example, if I put in a fern that is 164 and 0, 0, 0, 0, which yeah, gives a signal strength of 1 because it's more than 0, but less than 1 15th. It's not exactly 1 15th, but about 1 15th. And accordingly, when it's uh, full completely to 100%, 100%, and so on and so forth, it'll give a signal strength of 15. And all uh, between that will give a signal strength uh, or divided between uh, 1 and 14. So if I put in uh, more than 1 15th, which is actually 22, but... Oh, Uh, which still gives only one because, as I said, it's not really uh, that, it's not that exact. It's exact in another way, but uh, the exact math are in the wiki, and you can take a look at that, why it is like that there. So the next signal strength will be gained at 46, and what you would think now is if I place an item in there, it'll go up to f uh, 4, but as I said, it's not just, not exactly 1 15th, so it has to be 69. Uh, so that's just to keep in mind when you're building something that it's not exactly 1 15th all the time for the next signal strength. Also, what you can do is, is unstackable items, those count 100% for that slot. And if I put in like eight snowballs, that counts 50% for that slot. So um, yeah, as I said, if you want to know exact numbers, then go to the wiki. Now what you can also do is take an output from uh, one block further away with a solid block in between and that can't be two blocks, it, it has to be one block or no block at all. And yeah, then you can also grab, a, grab an output, as you can see. And the sad thing with brewing stands, in practice it doesn't really make sense to uh, take an output from that because it's not, because of the not, not exact exactness, <laughs> if you will. So let's uh, yeah, first compare them against what repeaters do and see if they have the same properties. First of all, we notice we can uh, add some delay on repeaters and we can also right click those. So we don't really know what's going on there, but let's add some power to them. And this doesn't really do anything. So. They seem quite similar if we send in power from the back. 
also we can't send power against the direction of the arrow, also not in both states. With both we can power a block that is in the front strongly. Also no difference here. And we can also receive power from a block that is being powered uh, how do you call not strongly? <laughs> um, and also this doesn't really do anything. The first difference occurs when we give it very very short pulses. So Minecraft Chris corrected me on that. This is actually this piston is actually going to fire one uh, a half tick later after that block is being powered, but and that doesn't really make a difference. It just means that it works. So, as you see, the repeater will pick up a signal, while the comparator won't. Because this signal is shorter than a tick, the comparator can't handle it. So this is the first difference that we know, but it still is really... It's not really that much, is it? So, uh, let's, let's take a jukebox. And jukeboxes, uh, they have it a bit differently. So these uh, disks are all enumerated from 1 all the way through to 12 and give the according signal strength. So I'm going to put in a signal strength of 3 now. As you see, it doesn't reach here, so it is exactly 3. And what a repeater does is it brings the signal back to 15. And the comparator now, well, you see, it takes the uh, takes whatever is behind it and puts it in the front. So we have a, a signal strength of 3, 2, 1, still 1, and 0. So that is the first or the second difference. And let's explore what we can do with that. So first of all, we can do something like this. We can have a sort of memory circuit that remembers a signal strength. As you see, we now have a signal strength of 3 stored because this one is 3. It gives 3 into this block. 3 comes out, 3 goes into there, and so on and so forth. And we can also raise that signal strength to 12. For example, this music is 12. And we can't we can't really lower it anymore. So what we do is just uh, reset it. We can also do it with uh, on this setting with this button here. And why I'm going to show you in a moment. So now we can give in a signal strength of 12. Let's reset it and signal strength of 3. Yay! So that's uh, used in some applications. It's not very commonly commonly used, I believe. And also what we can do is a pulse extender. So as you see this diminishes over time and what this does is pretty much the same thing here but it goes in 15 goes in, then when it is 15 here, it goes to 14 here, all the way around. This is 14, then it goes to 13, and so on and so forth. And what we can also do is add some more comparators to uh, make this double as long, for example. So this is a really small and effective pulse extender. So let's take a look at uh, what this feature does. So what we notice is that comparators have a side input as well. And well, it, it doesn't really seem to do anything. So let's change that. And aha! Uh -huh. So we don't really know what's going on here. But it's some something. It does something. 
that's what I wanted to say. So let's put in a signal strength of 15 from the back and 13 from the side and see what happens. So this doesn't seem any different from, uh, from this. But now you see it gives a signal, a signal strength of 2. And because we have 13 here and 15 there, we can conclude that it subtracts this one from uh, what goes in from the back. So let's test that a bit further. Let's set that on subtract mode and bump that all the way up to 8. So then we should be able to subtract 1, 2, 3. Indeed, it works. So let's, let's have some... Yeah, when we bump it up here, it goes up, and, when we, and this goes down. So it actually does subtract. Now, for the other feature, what does that do? Well, first of all, it doesn't subtract, as you know, or as you have seen. So let's bump that up, and... Yeah, this goes up just as normal. So let's bump that up. It disappears. So that's interesting. And it's one again. I better show you from this side. It's only one when we have that on one. So let's bump that up. And that up. Okay, two. Three. And it disappears when we... Uh, give it a fourth, a four here, and now it is four again, and disappears. Five again, disappears. So what this does, what the other feature does, is when the side input is has a higher signal strength than the back input, then it'll output nothing, and else it'll output what is whatever is behind here. And also, let's test what happens if we have two inputs. So let's bump that up to 8. And we have 1 and 1 being subtracted, and that still is 7. Okay, that is 6. When we subtract 2 and 1. So, yeah, it, it seems like it only... Uh, subtracts the greater one. And let's or let me show you a few applications for this. So what you can do is build an XOR gate. And this is kind of bugging out a bit. So this is just visual. It doesn't actually do anything. And you cannot update it at all. So I don't really know what's on going on there. If you want to know how that works, then I suggest you pause the video and think about it for a second, because that's actually really simple. What we can also do is invert uh, the side input there and send a signal strength of just as much at the back as the back input there, and then we can have an AND gate. And also we can make a really, really, really fast clock. As you see, it's even too fast for the clock to turn off. But for the dropper, uh, it, it works. And one thing to note here, let's uh, destroy that one, is if you have a dropper like here, for example, then it'll only fire once. Because this signal strength is going between 1 and 14 and this one's going between 0 and 13. So you have to keep in mind you have to keep that in mind when you're working with that. One thing that might be a bit different to get or difficult to get if you have an inventory that is a full block and can be powered uh then it'll always give out whatever the inventory has, even if it's empty. Except for when it's being pulled out of 
this block right there, or, or through a block, then it'll still pretty much do that. As you see, except for when this block is powered with 15, then it'll always give out 15. As you see, I cannot change anything here. Okay. So once this is powered with 15, it ooh, weird. Uh, and this is really counterintuitive. And also if I run power into there, this is again, just a snapshot glitch. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be strongly powered. It can also be weakly powered. So home assignment. Well, let's take that out. <laughs> That's distracting me. Um, I want you to build something that, or a dropper, that when the dropper is full, or when there's something in the dropper, I say, then it'll fire as long as nothing is in the dropper anymore, and then it'll uh, stop firing. So uh, this is called a an item disposal system. So I want you to build that. And the other thing I want you to build is a chest that when you take out items, that will start, or then a dispenser that will start firing arrows at you rapidly. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. One thing, uh, I will include screenshots of the of the uh, home assignments and to every video and that'll take up to two days from now. Yeah, so tell me how it went and give a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.